Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining the call today. Uh, this is going to be a fairly uh, short one, um, depending on whether uh, people have uh, things to raise. Um, but uh, we've been basically uh, spending quite a lot of time um, tidying up some things after the 4.1 release. Um, so that brings us on to the first bit of the agenda here which is our 4.1.2 uh, patch release of Singularity CE. Uh, came out two days ago. And uh, this is uh, just a, a patch release with bug fixes um, that are tidying up some things from uh, 4.1. Uh, so some of the stuff on here, uh, like this, this first line uh, up here, um, doesn't really um, have much impact to users it's more about um, making sure we conform with the OCI specifications properly. So um, we have uh, on this first point here, um, modified uh, some of our code so that when we take an OCI image and we run the container, it's actually running behind the scenes with correct annotations on the running container um, that are uh, documented by um, a conversion process in the OCI image spec. So that's kind of tidying up uh, the compliance to the standard. Uh, the second item is uh, relating to uh, running containers where they're built from a Docker file that declares a specific user. Um, now we had a, a subtle bug um, with ID mapping uh, in OCI mode so that um, when uh, a user was specified in an OCI container, uh, we were doing the mapping uh, based on that user in the container when we still need to do the mapping based on the, the host user who is starting the container in order that uh, when you look at permissions and files in the container, they, they map through properly uh, back to the host um, uh, user IDs and GIDs and everything works properly. So. Uh, that one was a, a relatively important bug fix in OCI mode uh, to allow you to properly use containers which declare a, a user in the Docker file. Um, we've gone ahead and added this, this third line here, um, some warning or info messages uh, for OCI features that we don't currently support. So if you try and run images with uh, volumes defined or that define exposed ports, uh, we've now got some information will pop up telling you uh, what to really expect there. So volumes straight out aren't supported and uh, exposed ports declared in OCI containers. Well, by default, Singularity runs things using the host network. So um, whatever your host firewall exposes will be exposed and uh, what the container declares as exposed doesn't really have a bearing on, on the reality. So those, uh, those messages kind of make it clearer what's going on. Uh, the other kind of useful user facing fix related to the OCI specs was that um, the OCI mode wasn't correctly honoring the work dir um, that an image can declare. So if an image declared that when you run the image, you should enter the image at a certain place, maybe um, slash home and a username corresponding to a user in the container, um, Singularity's OCI mode wasn't honoring this uh, before 4.12, uh, but now it does honor that properly. Um, in uh, 4.1, we moved uh, to running containers um, using uh, fuse uh, in user namespace mode by default, rather than extracting uh, them out to a temporary sandbox and running them from there. Um, the writable flag has some unusual behavior where um, previously, if you had a temporary sandbox uh, in a flow, then you could make that writable. Um, the changes don't actually go to the, the image at all. Uh, they're not persisted in any way. So it's not sort of a truly writable container, but you can write into the container for the duration it exists. That's a longstanding um, sort of somewhat confusing feature of Singularity. But uh, the, the uh, change to using Fuse um, 
modified it so it didn't actually work um, as it had before. So we've restored the previous behavior so that people don't have uh, any regressions in workflows where they might be depending on that. Uh, probably in Singularity uh, 5, we'll look to actually tidy this up because writable really kind of infers that you're writing to the container and it's, it's something that should persist. And really the fact that it kind of temporarily allows you to write in a, in an extraction of a container, which is only around for a, a little while, um, doesn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, we need to change that to a, a major version where we can make uh, a breaking changes to workflows. Um, there's a, a fix where uh, certain OCI images that have hard links in them and, and manipulate hard links across the nodes wouldn't extract properly. As this fix is for the native mode, um, the issue still exists in the OCI mode. And um, Adam, who's on the call, is, is looking into that at, at present for a future release uh, via one of the dependencies that we use. Um, we also have uh, two fixes at the bottom here. Um, which are related to running Singularity inside a, a user namespace or inside a, a another container. So if you're nesting Singularity, this is where you're most likely to hit these. Basically fixed uh, extracting OCI layers if you're in a root mapped user namespace, if you're running in, a con in Singularity from inside another container where you're root in that container. And also, um, if you're inside a container or a username space where you're mapped to a, a non-root user, um, we fixed uh, an issue that uh, uh, caused unsquashfs extraction of the container in order to run it to, to fail. So um, hopefully for people now running uh, Singularity from inside Singularity or inside Docker or inside Podman, uh, it'll be more straightforward. So that's what we have in, in 412. Uh, there's several things there. So I'd advise that uh, uh, anyone who's using particularly the OCI mode um, upgrades when they can. Any questions on any of this? Okay, uh, in which case I think the next item on our agenda is to mention the, the Fedora and uh, Apple packaging of Singularity CE. Uh, so if I go across to the Fedora packages site, we can see what the current status is and um, uh, what we now have, um, which we haven't had previously, is a, a four series release of, of Singularity is now in uh, the Apple repositories. So because there were some changes uh, to Singularity in the, the 4.0 release, which, which uh, modified behavior, um, we had to go through an incompatible upgrade process uh, with the Apple Steering Committee to get approval to, to push these new versions in. Uh, they're now there. So um, if you're using uh, Red Hat, Alma Linux, or Rocky Linux 9 or 8 or CentOS 7 still, then you'll be getting at the moment uh, Singularity CE 4.1.1 from Apple and the 4.1.2 um, uh, bug fix, which I've just talked about, is uh, is built and it's there uh, being tested at present. If you're someone uh, following Fedora, then um, the kind of unstable development release of Fedora called Rawhide has the latest version. Fedora 40, which isn't released yet, but will be released soon, will come out with uh, the 4.1 series. Fedora 39 and Fedora 38 remain on 3.11.5 um, because the uh, idea with Fedora is uh, to still avoid uh, incompatible upgrades and these will uh, age out because uh, the life cycle is, is quite quick compared to enterprise Linux where Apple stays around and we want to uh, be able to bring people up to a, a supported and, and maintained four series version of CE. All right, any questions about packaging in Apple or anywhere else? Okay, then moving on 
Um, I only have one other uh, development topic before we open the floor for any kind of issues, and that's uh, to raise people's awareness that um, there's a, a problem being reported on certain systems using uh, Go 122. Uh, so if you build um, Singularity with Go 122, which is the latest version, and then you try and use it on Ubuntu 20.04 or Debian 10, which have uh, slightly older versions of glibc than, than some other distributions, um, you might find that you hit uh, some issues which are kind of summarized in, in this um, uh, report here. Basically, when um, you have a flow in singularity, which is um, creating a sandbox or an extracting uh, a container image, a SIF, uh, onto disk, um, then uh, what you might find is that on this combination of Go and Ubuntu, um, it crashes. It says it can't uh, mount a tempfs file system. And if you look in logs and things, you'll see that there was actually a, a seg fault, a proper crash um, on the system. Now, if I kind of scroll down here, we can uh, go through and jump across to uh, the uh, GitHub repository for RunC, which is the kind of low-level runtime that we use, but also is behind Docker and other uh, container uh, tools. And um, they actually have hit the same crash, um, but it's occurring under kind of broader circumstances on this system for run C. Uh, for us, it's limited at the moment, uh, it seems to um, whenever a PID namespace is involved. Um, but this issue becomes quite complicated and we're not yet sure um, how we're gonna uh, solve it because um, really, although it starts appearing with Go 122, it's not an issue in Go 122. Um, what's happening is that um, some calls are made around um, some thread operations where the Go runtime is trying to uh, find um, uh, scheduling affinity and, and things like that. And um, what we have is a, a situation where a um, there's stale information about a process after some low level calls have happened um, related to namespaces or cloning a process. Um, and uh, there are two things to kind of argue here. You can either argue that the container runtimes are using uh, the libc wrong or that it's a, a bug in glibc. Um, and uh, there are actually kind of two bugs uh, if you look at it like that, um, there's an underlying bug where if you do certain low level things, which container runtimes do, um, then some thread calls return um, incorrect information. Um, and then the second bug is that if you try and get attributes of something with the incorrect information, um, there's a, a, a null pointer a dereference which uh, crashes the application entirely. So. The second thing is what actually causes this crash on um, Ubuntu with Go 122. But the first thing is an underlying issue which um, exists um, on essentially every distribution, not just Ubuntu, but it's kind of masked because the second issue isn't causing a crash. Uh, the Go people are actually going to add some error checking so that we might end up with a situation where the, the first issue um, causes uh, an error in Go code and, and then uh, the container runtime will exit. And that's something which, like I said, this is in run C's uh, issue tracker. So it's, it's not just known to Singularity, it's known uh, on other runtimes um, which are extremely widely used. So there's gonna be uh, quite a lot of effort put in various places about uh, how to work around this issue. Um, but uh, I, as I mentioned, kind of in the middle there, uh, for the moment, it seems like in Singularity, it's it's limited to a relatively um, small subset of the flows through the runtime, um, particularly where a, a process ID namespace 
uh, is invoked. We, we don't crash in other situations uh, at present, though it remains to be seen whether some of the uh, additional changes that they're planning for 122 to do more error checking um, will uh, cause us to crash in more places. But um, if you hit any of this, what you want to do for now is um, go ahead and build with uh, Go 121, not 122, and then uh, things will work. So the, the person who first reported this has confirmed that that's uh, working for them. And uh, obviously we have to, to fix the issue uh, somehow uh, so that it does work for Go 122 um, in the next six months, um, as that's the, the timeline for um, the retirement of support of Go 121 upstream. Um, anyway, all of this chatting about this is to kind of uh, uh, explain a little bit why there's not huge amounts of other kind of feature work and things going on right now. Uh, this is a, a bit of a head scratcher of a problem and something we have to solve. So um, there's uh, quite a bit of focus on there. And uh, I mentioned earlier, Adam is also focusing on um, some issues um, related to extraction of OCI images uh, to fix some bugs there. So that's uh, that's what's happening at the moment. Um, we'll uh, kind of get back to uh, a more broad roadmap discussion in, in the future once we've got past these issues. Um, all right, that's, that's all the update I really have for um, how things stand at the moment with Singularity CE. Uh, if anyone has any questions uh, about any of that, or you want to raise any kind of issue, um, we can have a chat about any um, idea or, or whatever, then uh, now is a great time to do it. Any questions or, or any thoughts at all? Okay then, just a, a fairly quiet and quick update this month. Uh, next month, uh, there won't be a, a community call. Um, we all uh, have our next one uh, happening in May instead. Uh, so uh, watch out for emails and notifications on Slack and so on. Um, and uh, it'll happen uh, on the, the usual first uh, Thursday in May this time. Um, and uh, be aware of the uh, time change uh, if uh, clocks go, um, uh, clocks change in uh, where you are in the world. Thanks for joining. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the issues here, you're welcome to pop onto the GitHub discussion. And if you're logged into GitHub, you'll be able to post comments here or, or ask stuff, or you can find us on, on Slack or, or Google Groups.